Hello everyone, this is Pilpo, and welcome to my ATM Star Guide series for All The Mods 9. This video will be on the Insanite block for the Philosopher's Fuel. The Insanite block is the final block acquired from Extreme Reactors. Here are all the materials required for all the machines you need to craft for the Insanite block. So to start off, we've got the basic reactor, all of the different components right there. The reprocessor, four of those, two fluidizers, one is bigger than the other right there, and two reinforced reactors. We're going to start off by making the basic reactor, and I'm going to take this over here. And the way that you make the basic reactor is you put a 3x3 three three down, and most of the reactors in extreme reactors require you to have all the edges be the casing. So in this case, that is all the edges right there. There's like a plus symbol in the middle and one at the top that's missing. The basic casing is made with some graphite bars, some sand and some iron. Graphite is just smelted charcoal or coal. You can also make the mystical seeds for it and use the essence. Next up, you're going to want to make one of these reactor fuel rods. If you want to make the same sort of sized reactor as me and that requires uranium, graphite, glass, and iron. That one goes directly in the middle right there, and it has this little glow on it. It's quite nice. Next up is the basic control rod. So this one uses the casing that we looked at earlier, uses some graphite, piston, redstone, and iron. This one goes directly on top like that. It needs to be poking out of the reactor need to have access to that. Now you need some way of getting power out of the reactor itself and for that we're going to use a reactor active forge energy tap and that one is the reactor casing, some redstone and some more redstone. So that's going to go in one of the sides right there. We've got two of these solid access ports so this is how you get in and out the uranium and the byproduct. You can use these for both in and out. So I'm going to put one there, one there, and uh, we can't right click on it yet because we need to form this. However, now that we've uh, got the last thing left, which is this right here, the reactor controller, which uses redstone comparator, diamond reactor casing, uranium and redstone. Stick that in the middle and it will form as a complete reactor right there. So if we have a look inside, it has no core status right here. This is where you would put some uranium to set this off. We're going to set this to active and we are going to set the one at the back here. We're going to leave it as the inlet and this one is going to be the outlet. Now I do have some uranium right here in my shulker box. So I'm going to take some of this and we're going to put that in the back right there like that. That is going to start being consumed and if we have a look at the reactor right now it says that it's started up. Now normally if we have a look in here this will be set to 100. So you need to go on top go to the basic control rod and set that to 0%. If I set it to 100 you'll notice that all of the core heat, the casing heat, all of that is going back down. This will stop producing power it just won't do anything. So you do want to set this up here to be zero and you want to set that to, well, click change to change that. We are actually not going to use the power from the reactors in this episode. So I'm going to stick a fluid trash can or an energy trash can, sorry, on the side there. And that will get rid of all the power that is being produced. Now, as you can see over here, it says 87.5 full and 0 0.17 now, 0 0.17 depleted. The uranium that's going in this is being converted into something called cyanite, and cyanite is what you need for pretty much all of the other things in extreme reactors. So once uh, cyanite is created, as, as you can see, this is quite slow. So we're not even at 1% right now, we're at 0.29%. 
That's the, the best it can do right now. You might have to leave this for quite a while, but eventually you will get one cyanite. Now, I do suggest that you, when you first get your cyanite, you convert it into, at least you need four of them and some supremium, you convert it into the cyanite seeds from Mystical Agriculture. These seeds can make the cyanite essence and you can, with just eight cyanite essence, make three cyanite ingots. That's a lot quicker than running one of these uh, reactors and you don't have to feed it any uranium or anything like that. You'll just get a bunch of cyanite out of it. That's basically all we're going to use the basic reactor for is to get some cyanite, four cyanite to be precise. You can also use this to eject the fuel so that the actual fuel you have in your reactor. If you press eject, it won't give you the uranium back, it will give you yellorium ingots. Now, I don't know if it's changed yet because uh, I'm on version 0.2.6 of All the Mods 9, but in this version, there was a few like issues with uh, yellorium, like yellorium is needed for a few items, specifically the fluidizer. It looks like those have been changed now so you can use like uranium and things like that now. But that was an issue at one point that you had to have yellorium in there. Okay, now you've got some cyanite, you can use that to make a reprocessor. So this does require cyanite. The reprocessor casing needs quite a bit of cyanite to make one of the casing. So you might want to set the seed up, go off and do something else for a while, come back when you've got like quite a lot of cyanite. So we're going to set up the reprocessor right now to process the cyanide into plutonium, which is the next component. I am just going to quickly have a look at the chunk borders right here. So I'm going to do it in this chunk. The reason that I'm doing that is because it's better to do it in a single chunk. You don't want to have it like crossing a chunk boundary because that can cause some issues later on. So this middle block here, if you have the Extreme Reactors book, it doesn't show you this, but this middle block right there needs to be the reprocessor collector. So this thing right here, if uh, I show you the recipe, does require netherite. So you are going to have to go into the nether for this. And uh, I am going to build this seven high. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the waste injector goes right at the top. So you need the reprocessor collector at the bottom, waste injector at the top. You need a output port. So we're gonna just put the output port right there. We're gonna put the fluid injector right here. And we're gonna put a power port. This one needs to be powered. You could almost use the power from the uh, basic reactor right there to power this. Uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to use a ender gate because I already have power set up. And then you need a controller right at the front there. You can use JEI to find these recipes. And then you just want to put some reprocessor glass in there and job done. You've got a reprocessor. So you can turn that on. It will be using some power. But the way that we're going to get uh, items and fluids into this is we're going to use a sink for infinite water. We're going to stick that on the fluid injector. For now I'm just going to use a mechanism pipe and we're going to pipe water into the reprocessor. So we've got water in the tank right here and if we take the cyanite that we had earlier and we put that in the top like this you can see the cyanite is being reprocessed and it should turn into plutonium. Now, next up, we're gonna craft a fluidizer. So the fluidizer can be built in pretty much the exact same way as the reactor we've got over there. So I'm gonna do it right next to this. And I think this one needs to go on top as well, perfect. And then we've got the power port, which again, I'm gonna put the power port at the back there. And I'm gonna put a uh, a gate on there as well. We need an output, so I'm going to put the output on this side and I'm going to put the input on this side. 
So that is a solid input and a fluid output. And then the final thing that is needed is the fluidizer controller. So once this is crafted, you'll notice that once you turn it on, uh, it's got a few bits there. We are going to use, have we got any more cyanite left up here? Okay, we've got one left by the looks of it. I'm going to put that in here. This is going to turn the cyanite into, wait for it, there you go, liquid cyanite. So with the uh, liquid cyanide that we've got right here, we can move that liquid cyanide into the fluid injector of a new reprocessor that I just built. And if we have a look in here, we've got some liquid cyanide and we can use the plutonium. You actually need two of the plutoniums right there. We stick that in, you can see, once you turn it on, that is being reprocessed from plutonium using the cyanite. So cyanite and plutonium turn into ludicrite. So the next thing we want to make is a reinforced reactor. So this one actually does require, if we have a look at the reinforced reactor casing, some steel ingots. There's several ways of doing this, in all the mods 9 at least. And the best way is probably by either doing this one here or Mechanism has a really nice way of doing it using the uh, Metallurgic Infuser. I'm not going to go into that today, how to get the best steel, but we are going to build this reactor. So this reactor is a 5x5, five five, so I'm going to try and build this 5x5 five five without hitting our shulker box. Next thing is the reactor fuel rods and I'm going to put them in in a cross pattern. I believe you have to do it like this and we are going to put the control rods on top like we did previously. This is where the extra four casing came from. Put those on top like that. Then we've got the power tap so I'm going to put the power tap at the back like we've been doing recently and I'm actually going to put, I think I've got it in here, a energy trash can in this one, just like that. Uh, so that will void all the power that this creates. Recently, the ATM team has buffed the amount of power that comes out of these reactors, so it's actually not bad. So that is the fluid injection. This one is the solid fuel injection. And uh, we're gonna put down the reactor controller the rest of this we can fill in with glass, so I'm going to fill that in right here. Just like that, and that has now formed. As you can see, you've got the, the double line around the edge. And if you have a look in here, I can set that to on. And I can right click on this. This is all set to zero. I think all of these have been set to zero, which is exactly what we want to see. And now if we put some plutonium in this, I only have a certain amount of plutonium to hand right now, but that's fine. If we put some plutonium in, this is generating some power, and you can see we should be getting, ah, it says it right there, magentite. Magentite is the, the next like reprocessor material that we're going to need. So, um, me and Mr. T have just been doing some troubleshooting because there seems to be a bug right now with the magentite being produced from reactors. It turns into a different type of magentite. So if we have a look in here, I've actually got two in my system. And if I take this one out, for example, and I put it back in, it turns into the other one. There's some tags issue, but I would suggest once you set this up, you get yourself the creative tank, which you can find over here. You do need to be in cheat mode, but yeah, that's the only thing that actually works right now. So we are using a, I'm going to put this in like that. That does produce some magentite. I, they, they must have, they must fix this at some point, right? Otherwise people can't create the star. So we're assuming that at that point you could just connect this reactor fuel injector port 
or this will be the ejector, right? Because we set it to the outlet mode. And uh, you can just pipe it up to your uh, reprocessor. But once you've got the reprocessor like this, you can turn it on with some Ludocrite in there, which we made earlier. And that will produce, when this is done, some Ridiculite. So right here, we've got some Ridiculite. So now that we've got the Ridiculite, we do need to now get ourselves some Rosinite. So to do that, you need a new fluidizer. And this one is also going to be a big fluidizer. F3G, make sure we're not crossing any chunk boundaries. Never mind, I'm not missing one. I, uh, I put a bit of glass at the top there. There you go. You can have the top as glass as well, by the looks of it. And uh, I've got the power port on the side here, the fluidizer power port. I've got two solid fuel injectors right here. One output port. So if we have a look inside this one, we can turn it on. And all we need to do is feed into this some plutonium. So uh, I've actually got an infinite supply right here. So you know what? I'll just get a stack. I'll put plutonium in one side and then in the other side, I've got some yellorium in my system. So I'm going to grab that out. Now, before I put the yellorium in, I do want to test if you can put uranium in because uh, you couldn't do that originally. I don't know if they've changed it. So you can do that now. But if we have a look here, doesn't look like it's working. This is why I showed you how to get the yellorium. So if I put the yellorium in, and we have a look, these are now processing together, and that will make you some verdurium. That's the one. So with the verdurium, what you can do is you can input that into a reactor. So I'm going to build another reactor. So this is making some verdurium and you can use either a pipe or whatever you want to move this. This I haven't had an issue with, the verdurium. It's just the magentite and the rosinite that I've had issues with in the past. So that is now empty, but it is not empty because it, it should say. Yes, it's got some in there. So again, we can turn that on. That's going to increase the core heat quite a lot. And that is generating us quite a lot of uh, rosinite right there. So the rosinite is coming out of this side. I've set this one to outlet mode again. So there's the out outlet right there. Again, we're going to need a reprocessor. And there we go, that has now formed, and this has also got power in it. You can put these wherever you want on these faces, by the way. I don't know if I've said that yet. But what we're going to do is grab a, another pipe. And I want to see if this works, because if this doesn't work, we're going to have to do the same thing as we did. That is also not working. Excellent. There we go. We have got the Rossinite going into the reprocessor. Again, we're only doing this because for some reason it doesn't actually make the correct type in the reactors right now. I will report this as a bug to the ATM team. Uh, but that is going in here. And now the last thing left to do is if we grab our uh, Rudicolite or Ridicolite, I suppose. That's how you're supposed to say it. You need two of these. This is all the ridiculite that I had from my personal supply right there. That is going to give us some in anite. So in anite is what you get from that. So right there. Now you want to use this in anite around a netherite block to get yourself an in anite block. And there we go. We just got eight. So I can use this around a netherite block. I already have some in my system. so. There we go. So that'll get us the in anite block. I took the rest out of here. And the other thing that you're going to need is some 
beniotite, so this stuff right here. You get this from mining in the nether, so ben, beniotite, this stuff. There we go. So the last thing you're going to need to do once you've made the block of in nanite is you are going to want to put some beniotite in the top like that. And uh, that will combine with the rosinite and that will give you some insanite. Now it does take 16 beniotite per craft. And we can see it in here. So we've got 16 and it turns it into one insanite right there. And finally, the last thing that you need to do is combine the insanite with the inanite and you get the insanite block. And then you can use that for the philosopher's fuel. And that's it. There you go. That's how you get the insanite block. So I've got a couple of tips just to end off the episode here. And that is when you form a multi-block structure, try and put them in a single chunk because multi-blocks across chunks can cause issues. My second tip is uh, Applied Energistics has all these weird interactions right now with uh, the big reactors. So I would definitely suggest using pipes of some sort. Pipes from the pipes mods, pretty good because it doesn't have like an internal buffer like the mechanism pipes do. So I would highly recommend using those ones, even though I'm not using them here. And finally, entangled blocks can be used on all of the faces of these things. So if you do want to set up like a big room of these reprocessors and then entangle the like fluid imports or something like that, then that's also a way of doing it. And uh, you can actually have some really nice clean setups. This is not really a nice clean setup right now, is it? Now, when I first originally did the uh, Insanite block for my ATM9 series, it took me like five or six hours to figure out just because I was doing things wrong and I was just trying to figure it out without the book or anything. Bit of exploration, it was actually quite fun. But I would uh, greatly appreciate any feedback people have got about this mod. Uh, but yeah, that's it for today. If you would like more guides like these on specific components of the ATM star, then just give me a comment or join the Discord. So we've got loads of people in the Discord. All of them are awesome, all very willing to help. Uh, the link for the Discord is in the description. If you would like a hands-on look at this setup, uh, I've actually built this on the ATM9 server, the Pilpo ATM9 server. To get access to that, you can join the Patreon, and the Patreon is just $1 to get access. And you can fly around, you can talk to people, you get a bit of server space as well that you can build your own stuff in if you want to do that. Yeah, other than that, thank you for watching, thanks for joining, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!